Good afternoon, Ms. Buckley, Ms. Jones. My name is Kasanya Gore. Today I'll be presenting my English PLO and History PLO. We had to, we read a book called Fahrenheit 451. We had to write an introduction based on um, a characteristic of, the char of one of the characters in the book. My introduction is, Guy Montag is a very confused and curious character all at the same time in the story of Fahrenheit 451. I feel that though, I feel that throughout the story, he was he was first very straightforward with his job, very consistent with writing books. That was his duty. But now that Clarice got into his head, he started wondering the mystery behind the books. My evidence, this was when Montag was talking to Clarice. Are you happy, she said, am I what, he cried, happy of all the nonsense. He stopped laughing, of course I'm happy. What does she think? I'm not, he asked, he asked the quiet room. So, um, ever since Clarice had, I use evidence because ever since Clarice had talked to Montag about is he happy about his life or what he does, he, he couldn't really answer the question, he doesn't really know. So basically ever since that question he's been questioning his life. Well, I'm kinda of, like he's kinda of confused, like am I really happy about what I'm doing? Should I really be doing this? He doesn't know, he's curious, he wants to look he wants to like understand what he wants to do better and yeah. Evidence too I put Montag had only an instant to read a line, but it blazed in his mind for the next minute. He dropped the book, immediately another fell into his arms, crushed the book with wild devotion within the insanity of mindlessness to his chest. So this happened when the old lady had a whole bunch of books in her house and he came and they're about to burn it down, but a book obviously landed to his, like fell and he know he read a line and it, kind of like caught his attention, so now he wants to read more about it. So he took the book, cashed into his arms. He was, curious. <clears throat> he was curious and wanting to know what the meaning behind this book was. So, yeah. Evidence three, Montag shot one continuous pulse of liquid fire on him. Montag shut his eyes, shouted and fought to get his hand in his eyes ears to clamp and to cut away the sound. So Montag kills Captain Baby, and it turns out that he doesn't really know what to do after. He's kind of like confused. He's he can't believe that he actually did. He doesn't know what he doesn't know where to go, but eventually he ends up finding these uh, book scholars that end up helping him like build a better social society and bring more knowledge to the people. Now I will be presenting my history PLO. Kind of just presenting myself to you. Um, yeah, it's my history PLO. Um, introduction. I'm going to essentially just go three social economic impacts of industrial revolution. The question was, who did the greatest impact in social society? Um, to me, I felt that we always kind of like do like who did the great the greatest impact, but I kind of wanted to do like who didn't do a great impact in social society. So for the my introduction is the industrial, the industrial Revolution did not have the greatest impact in social society because of the factory life and child labor. My first evidence is from Charles Dickens. He was an author of the book called Hard Times. This is for factory life. My quote is, according to Dickens, wiping their swarthy, dark visages faces, the whole town seemed to be frying in oil the streets were hot and dusty. So first, it's talking about the environment. It was dusty, it was cloudy, it was dirty, then it's polluted. Basically, all the breathing in is like smoke and 
just all that polluted air. Um, the men were dirty, they're filthy, their faces were like black from working so hard day by day, working for barely anything. So, yeah, hard working. Working in the factories was very tough for them. And my second evidence would be from Joseph Hebergen. He was a worker at the factory. This is an interview. So Joseph is being the one, he's the one being interviewed by a person. This is for child labor, by the way. Um, for quotes, I put, according to Hebergen, I have damaged lungs, my lung muscles do not function properly, and I will not support the weight of my lungs. Dozen who died during the two and a half years, a boy was caught in a machine and both his thigh bones broke. His hands were bruised, his eyes were nearly torn out, torn out and his arms were broken. Um, his sister, it was, I guess it got cut off, but his sister came to help him get out. So this kind of shows that factories um, little kids also worked in factories, and they were very dangerous for them. Um, but obviously, the work on the work on owners didn't care. Better. Um, the second part is that is I feel that it's better for adults to work in factories than little kids because it's like if you think about it, it's little kids working in like factories with huge machines. Um, if you like, if there's a better chance of little kids getting hurt than adults. Because little kids don't really know how to like function those things properly. Um, chance. <coughs> oh yeah, sorry to talk about that. Yeah, so they just didn't really care about the kids. They just let them do all the stuff that's at the factory. Um, this is from section 2.2 of my DDQ that we recently gave by our teacher. This is a picture showing that there's the work. Um, the work on there. He's the one that just sits around, basically just like chilling, doesn't even care about what these people are doing. He gets practically all the money while the little kids just race to get such a little amount. He doesn't even care. And he's just laughing on the little um, change up while this kid is running, trying to work really hard to get that little minimum wage. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it. Thank you for the time. I will be presenting my grammar test and my other DBQ. Do you want to hit this? So this is my grammar test that we have to take. Um, I'll start off with the, so obviously the is an adjective. Owner, um, owner is a noun. The sign is to be an adjective because he. What is the owner doing? The sign. Both of you are doing it. Is that still part of the noun phrase? It doesn't. Oh, no. No, it shouldn't be. There we go. So what did he decide? He decided to sell his land to put all that work for Thank you. 
anything else? You have to throw this stuff over. Okay. Huh? Oh, well, I didn't, I forgot what the little words meant. But um, I had a feeling this was conjunction. Uh, had would be a verb. Then is a verb. <coughs> All right, going on the logic with Chris said, if there's a conjunction, and it's just separating the two clauses, and we already have a comma, one of them we don't need. So which is not a conjunction? Which is not a so not, not which, the word which. Not oh. a <laughs> which tells us. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much. Where, when it happens. What about in? You got both in. What is in though? Well, we can do a lot of stuff with it. So I'm guessing it's a man. Just in the right explanation. Oh, there's somewhere. Where? Oh, at her? Where? Location, direction. Yeah. You don't need to put it. I'm good. Move on, baby, please. Okay. That was a little job. <clears throat> okay. Um, the question was, how does Montesquieu's view different from a government system based on national law? So, to make it simple, Montesquieu believes this is um, his source, this is him talking. So, he says there can be no degree where the executive lives in the power of the person or the body of the person because such concentration is <coughs> bound to result in environmental type. I only want to know the read because I'm going to go for them. So, and then for executive, legislative, judicial powers, are you guys going to know? Of course, executive is the president and the state of the house of, I mean, house of representatives, judicial, judicial, wait, oh, lawmakers. No, wait. Judicial, it is House of Representatives, legislative, and it's the law. What does judicial sound like? The judge. Yeah, the judge. So they, they're the ones that judge the law. So. Oh, separation of power is better than coming to the It's better than, um, it's different from absolute monarchy because, okay, absolute monarchy means when, to, when the king and the queen, they basically, they're the only ones who don't get the rules and on the law, but the people, they don't have the same. So it really, like, doesn't matter what the people think. It's only up to the king and the queen. So, So, for instance, 
Jewish mother wanted to do. She is made as different from us who belong to because she believes that she believes that there should be she goes against with no liberty and What is the question asking? It's asking what to teach me to get from the government. So my government system based on us So how the police are different than us with the Because he believes that the power should be should be separated and and actually it is basically the to have all these high rulers to So you can say, Montesquieu believes that... Montesquieu believes that... Montesquieu believes in separation of power, unlike absolute monarchy, because all they believe is only the high rulers to come to the law. So this is what we have done to the the Executive judicial power is part of the United States. So, what would your analysis would be? That people who live there should be. What would happen if there were no separation of powers and there was only one ruler? What? Why? Because there's only one person who can rule. And it's like, would anybody disagree with me? If Barack Obama had all the power, what could be a major consequence of that? Okay. We take away the freedom of the people. Mm -hmm. And then you, it's like the only one that comes with the rules. No one is going to come discussing it first. He's just coming up with like the person who can control the government. You should at least have at least some people around you to discuss this, make sure if they're reasonable or not, make sure if they're smart. And then let's put it down on the side that you feel like it. Okay. So, what could you say for analysis? Essentially, there should be freedom. Essentially, there should be freedom of faith. There should be liberty and the, the executive of the state of the power because it's not a thing. This is a society in which we have so many problems. And we have that. It, it should be because they should have liberty and the executive of the state of the judicial because it's not a thing for society because I'm not going to worry about the rules because that should be not enough to know that they can pursue that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes.